This is a graph of the unemployment rate throughout modern history. Here is the average unemployment rate at about 4.5%. Here is the unemployment rate after the dot-com bubble burst and 9-11, that was at about 6%. Here is the unemployment rate during the financial crisis of 2008, that was at a whopping 10%. And here is what Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin said could happen to the unemployment rate at some time this year. It is reported that the Senate and US lawmakers were warned of a 20% unemployment rate that could be coming in the near future. This would be the highest unemployment rate since the worst parts of the Great Depression. And if you don't believe that this is going to happen, well, we are already seeing signs that it is. Unemployment websites for the state of Ohio, New York, New Jersey, and Washington, D.C. have all crashed this week. And in Ohio specifically, they received 36,645 unemployment claims just on Monday alone. That is typically what they would receive during an entire month. And the results were similar in Pennsylvania, where 50,000 people made unemployment claims, and Minnesota had 31,000 claims. And in fact, if that wasn't enough, the American Hotel and Lodging Association has already reported that 4 million jobs in the travel-related industries have already been lost in the last month, or are on the verge of being lost in the next few weeks, unless there is some drastic change to the current economic situation. Now, if that's true, that would almost double the current unemployment rate by itself. Now, if that wasn't bad enough, we're also seeing reports that nearly 50% of all hotels in the United States could face closures by the end of this year. And this is all being backed up by several respected economic institutes that have reported that it's likely three to four million jobs will be lost in the next several months in the United States, which would be on pace with the worst months of the Great Depression. So the economic trajectory of the global economy might be the worst it has ever been in history. And to prevent this, governments all around the world have been firing off every possible economic policy that they can in order to create economic stability, and thus far, well, nothing has worked. For example, when the Federal Reserve reduced interest rates to 0%, the very next day was one of the worst trading days in the history of the stock market. Another example is that the United States government announced an $850 billion stimulus package to the economy, yet the next day the market cratered another 9%. And finally, the big banks have received $2 trillion worth of loans from the Federal Reserve in the last seven days in an attempt to help stabilize the market. Yet market volatility actually increased and is at a higher level than it was during the financial crisis of 2008. Now taking into account everything that has happened to the economy over the past few weeks, we have seen roughly 25 to $40 trillion worth of losses since February. Think about that for a second. $40 trillion has just vanished, and this is not even being talked about by most people. It seems that every day we are waking up to trillion dollar losses in the economy, yet no one is mentioning the potential repercussions that this will bring to the lives of the average person. And some of these repercussions might actually be quite surprising. Let me explain. You see, during the Great Depression, worldwide GDP fell by more than 15%, unemployment shot up over 20%, and global production of virtually everything fell by more than 50%. And because of this, the world, well, became poor. All of a sudden, a family that was living paycheck to paycheck in the middle class, they were now struggling to be able to even purchase food. You saw many other people losing their jobs and their life savings, which caused a doubling of the suicide rate during this period. And you also saw infants and children weighing significantly less than normal, which caused some long-term negative health effects such as much higher blood glucose levels and a much higher risk of obesity by about 50% when these children grew up. Overall, the quality of life for the average person around the world dropped off a cliff during this time. But there was a strange thing that happened. Despite all of the negative consequences that came with the horrible economy, life expectancy and overall health actually increased. Here's why. What happens when the economy tanks? Well, people become poor. And when this happens, people need to make different choices with their money. So what you saw during the Great Depression was a reduction in smoking, a reduction in overall obesity, a reduction in traffic accidents, and there was also a significant improvement in overall air quality due to the lack of industrial activity. And as you might have heard, we've actually seen a reduction in pollution all around the world due to all of the lockdowns that are occurring. Now, all of these factors during the Great Depression actually led to slightly better overall 
health for the average person, despite the quality of life being significantly lower than it was before. They kind of lived by the motto, use it up, wear it out, make do or do without. That was a very common phrase back then. Now, after saying all of this, there have been more recent conflicting studies about health effects during a recession. For example, several studies have found that the 2008 financial crisis may have resulted in the deaths of several hundred thousand people. This is because during that time, wealth for the average person and funding for health programs all dried up, therefore causing people to not get the care that they needed. But the main repercussion that I think of when considering this economic downturn is the impact it will have on the daily life of the average person. I mean, most people in the world are already living paycheck to paycheck and only have a few thousand dollars worth of savings. And that can only get people so far. Now imagine what's going to happen if all of a sudden they are either laid off, have to take a pay cut, or have reduced hours at work. This is going to be the scenario for many people out there that are already struggling to get by, and unfortunately their struggle might only get worse really soon. Now another thing that we typically see during times of economic hardship is something that some of you might find to be an oxymoron, and that is government efficiency. During economic downturns, we see near lightning speed of passing of bills and reforms that typically would take years to go through. In the 1930s, we saw the New Deal get implemented in just three months. And I mean, right now, President Trump is pushing for a temporary universal basic income policy where all Americans will be receiving $1,000 a month until the lockdowns are lifted. And think about that, that was considered an extreme left-wing policy up until just a few weeks ago. But when there's enough fear in the eyes of both the public and politicians, you typically see a lot of unification and agreement on a drastic changes in policy. And so that brings up a few key points I want to touch on. Where is this influx of public money coming from, and where is the vanishing money going? So let's tackle the first question. The ability for the US government to pump in over $1 trillion worth of economic stimulus does not come from tax dollars. Well, not yet. You see, the government is actually taking out debt in order to give money to the public right now in hopes that in better economic times, taxes will be raised so the government can pay back this debt. In a sense, the US government is borrowing money from the present day American investors and financial institutions in hopes of paying them back in the future. So this means that even though your tax dollars today may not be going towards the economic stimulus package, it does mean that a small portion of all of your tax bills for years to come will go to towards paying back this debt from the stimulus package. So all in all, the government is trying to limit the bad times today at the cost of limiting the good times of tomorrow. Now let's tackle the second question. Where is the vanishing money going? I mean, I mentioned how trillions of dollars are being wiped out daily, but what does this actually mean? Well, it's actually due to two factors. The first of which is that there is a lack of production due to the lockdowns. So for example, let's say you're back in medieval times and you have a small piece of steel that is worth around $30 to the market. But through your own productivity and skill set, you are able to turn this useless piece of steel into a much more useful sword. Now, even though the material is the exact same as it was before, you have now created a more valuable item that might be worth $200 instead of just $30. And that example is being applied all around the world today. Many people are in lockdowns and aren't able to utilize their normal productivity, which is creating less value to the overall economy. Secondly, there is something called crowd psychology. You see, the value of anything is solely based on, well, psychology. This can range from objects like cars or TVs, to services like cleaning or haircutting, all the way to currency like the American dollar. Back in the day, an American dollar was backed by gold, meaning that you could convert your money into a proportional amount of gold. But after the abandonment of the gold standard in 1971, the American dollar's value was solely based on what the world thought the American dollar was worth. So if the entire population woke up tomorrow and thought the American dollar was worthless, then the American dollar would actually be worthless. Now think of what this means for the current stock market crash. Why is Apple worth $230 billion less today than it was a few weeks ago? 
Is it because they lost $230 billion worth of Apple products? Or had $230 billion stolen from their corporate bank accounts? Nope. It is because of crowd psychology, and indirectly supply and demand. A large reason why the price of Apple and the value of the entire stock market has dropped is because most people are scared to invest in stocks right now. And rightfully so. In a time of uncertainty in the economy, people would rather hold onto their money and not lose it, while trying to avoid investing in a company where it may go down 20% in just a few weeks. And this is how trillions of dollars are vanishing from the economy right now. The lockdowns are causing decrease in overall economic value and productivity, and that is being combined with the fear of economic uncertainty. And the trouble is, all of this creates a positive feedback loop. If everyone were to hold on to their money in perpetuity, then the economy would not work. By holding on to your money and not spending it at the local restaurant that you're used to shopping at, you are causing that local business to lose money and potentially go out of business. This causes the loss of more jobs and creates more fear about the economy, which causes more people to hold on to their money. This cycle continues until we hit a bottom like the recession that we are about to go through. And I do realize that the main reason that people are not going out to restaurants right now is because of the lockdown itself. That is the cause. But the effect that this has is still the very same. You know, it's very weird thinking about all this, about how trillions of dollars could just disappear simply because of productivity and psychological factors. But this is the world we're living in. And one of the last things I wanna leave you with is what might happen to the average person and the economy going forward. The first thing is that there is a chance that you will lose your job this year. If you work in a service industry or a travel-related industry, you will likely be affected the most. But if you work in something like the tech industry, you will probably have a good amount of insulation from this recession. But regardless of what your situation is, just be prepared and don't be stupid with your money. Now, another thing I want to mention is that we are going through an unprecedented slowdown in the global economy. In fact, this is arguably the fastest drop in history. But what this also means is that we might also see one of the quickest rebounds in history. I mean, think about it. The main cause for this recession is worldwide lockdowns where people will just can't work. So if all of those lockdowns were to be lifted in the next few weeks or maybe a couple months, then theoretically, we can see a pretty quick rebound from this recession. Now, I just would like to say that the rebound will not be anywhere near as fast as the fall because it takes months or even years for new businesses to open up again, but it only takes a few weeks for businesses to go bankrupt, which is what we're seeing today, unfortunately. And my hopes is that as soon as life returns to normal, hopefully that'll be a good enough kickstart to get us out of this recession fairly quickly because it's really tough seeing people out there struggle like this. And the last thing I'd like to mention and kind of ask you guys is what do you think of the economic repercussions of what is happening right now? Are you scared? of the economy going forward? Do you think we will have a quick rebound? Let me know in the comments down below. I also have some other videos like this in my documentaries playlist, so please check that out. And I'm also putting out videos like this once or twice a week, so please subscribe if you want to see those, leave a like, and click on the next video of mine. So hopefully you'll do that, and I'll see you guys, well, in a few seconds.